Welcome to SS7 eLearning program. Signaling system number 7, SS7, is a set of telephony signaling protocols, which are used in public switched telephone networks. The main purpose is to set up and tear down telephone calls. Other uses include number translation, local number portability, prepaid billing mechanisms, short message service. SMS, and a variety of other mass market services. After completing this course you will be able to Explain what is SS7 Sketch SS7 network and explain different nodes Understand SS7 signaling protocol stack Understand SS7 application in PSTN, GSM and UMTS networks. Provide a brief protocol description of various SS7 protocol layers. Signaling System 7 or SS7 in short, is a global standard for telecommunications, defined by the International Telecommunication Union. Telecommunication Standardization Sector or ITUT in its Q700 series. The ITU definition of SS7 allows for national variants such as the American National Standards Institute ANSI, and the European Telecommunication Standards Institute ETSI, standard used in Europe. SS7 defines the procedures and protocols by which network elements in the public switched telephone network or PSTN exchange information over a digital signaling network, to affect wireless, cellular, and wireline call setup, routing and control. SS7 implement out-of-band signaling protocols, carried in a separate signaling channel, to explicitly keep the end-user's audio path separate from the signaling phase. This is to eliminate the possibility that end users may introduce tones that would be mistaken for those used for signaling. SS7 is also referred to as common channel signaling or CCS due to its hard separation of signaling in bearer channels. As compared to in band signaling, out of band signaling that is used in SS7 provides Faster call setup times using multi-frequency MF, signaling tones. More efficient use of voice circuits as they are used just to carry traffic, not the signaling. Support for Intelligent Network IN, services which require signaling to network elements such as database systems without voice trunks. It allows for signaling at any time in the entire duration of the call. Not only at the beginning. All nodes in the SS7 network are called signaling points or SPs. Each SP is identified by a unique address called a point code or PC. SPs have the ability to read a point code and determine if the message is for that node and has the ability to route SS7 messages to another SP. The three types of signaling points are Service Switching Point or SSP Signal Transfer Point or STP Service Control Point or SCP The symbolic representation is as provided in the figure. SSPs are switches that originate, terminate, or tandem calls. An SSP creates packets called signal units. It sends signaling messages to other SSPs to set up, manage, and release voice circuits, required to complete a call. An SSP may also send a query message to a centralized database, an SCP, to determine how to route a call, for example, a toll-free 1 to 800 or 888 call in North America. An SCP sends a response to the originating SSP, 
containing the routing number associated with the dialed number. SSPs communicate with the voice switch via the use of primitives. They have the ability to send messages using ISUP for call setup and teardown, and TCAP for database lookup protocols. Network traffic between signaling points may be routed via a packet switch called an STP. An STP routes each incoming message to a now going signaling link based on routing information contained in the SS7 message. An STP is a router and or a gateway in the SS7 network. Because it acts as a network hub, an STP provides improved utilization of the SS7 network by eliminating the need for direct links between signaling points. Messages are not originated by an STP. If an originating SSP does not know the address of a destination SSP, the STP may perform global title translation, a procedure by which the destination signaling point is determined from digits present in the signaling message, for example, dial toll-free number, calling card number, or mobile subscriber identification number. Gateway STPs serve as the interface into another network. STP can provide protocol conversion and can also act as a firewall to screen SS7 messages exchanged with other networks. The SCP acts as interface between the telecommunications databases and the SS7 network. The SCP provides provides access to databases. The address of an SCP is a point code, and the address of the database SCP interfaces with is a subsystem number. The protocol used to access and interface a database application is TCAP. Signaling links are logically organized by link type, A through F according to their use in the SS7 signaling network. A link, an A, or access link, connects a signaling endpoint, for example, an SCP or SSP, to an STP. Only messages originating from more destined to the signaling endpoint, are transmitted on an A link. B link, AB, or bridge link, connects an STP to another STP. Typically, a quad of B links interconnect here, or primary, STPs, for example, the STPs from one network to the STPs of another network. C-link, AC, or cross-link, connects STPs performing identical functions into a mated pair. A C-link is used only when, an STP has no other route available to a destination signaling point due to link failure, S. D-link. AD, or diagonal link, connects a secondary, for example, local or regional, STP pair to a primary, for example, internetwork gateway, STP pair in a quad link configuration. Secondary STPs within the same network are connected via a quad of D links. The distinction between a B link and a D link is rather arbitrary. For this reason, such links may be referred to as BD links. E-link, an E, or extended link, connects an SSP to an alternate STP. E-links provide an alternate signaling path if an SSP's home STP cannot be reached via an A-link. E-links are not usually provisioned unless the benefit of a marginally higher degree of reliability justifies the added expense. F-link, an F, or fully associated link, connects to signaling endpoints, that is, SSPs and SCPs. 
F-links are not usually used in networks with STPs. In networks without STPs, F-links directly connect signaling points. SS7 uses the term levels when referring to its architecture. The term levels should not be confused with OSI layers because they do not directly correspond to each other. With reference to the open system interconnection, OSI, 7 layer reference model, SS7 uses a 4 level protocol stack. OSI layer 1 through 3 services are provided by the MTP together with the SCCP. The SS7 architecture currently has no protocols that map into OSI layers 4 through 6. Top, ISUP, and TCAP are considered as corresponding to OSI layer 7. SS7 and the OSI model were created at about the same time. For this reason, they use some differing terminology. The SS7 physical layer is called MTP Level 1, MTP 1. The data link layer is called MTP Level 2, MTP 2. And the network layer is called MTP Level 3, MTP 3. Collectively they are called the message transfer part, MTP. The MTP protocol is SS7's native means of packet transport. The term user refers to any protocol that directly uses the transport capability provided by the MTP namely, TAP, ISUP, SCCP, TCAP, etc. An SS7 message is called a signal unit, SU. There are three kinds of signal units, fill-in signal units, FISUs, link status signal units, LSSUs, message signal units, MSUs, fill-in signal units, FISUs, are transmitted continuously on a signaling link in both directions unless other signal units, MSUs or LSSUs, are present. FISUs carry basic level 2 information only, for example, acknowledgement of signal unit received by a remote signaling point. Link status signal units, LSSUs, carry one or two octets of link status information between signaling points at either end of a link. The link status is used to control link alignment and to indicate the status of a signaling point, for example, local processor outage, to the remote signaling point. Message signal units, MSUs, carry all call control, database query and response, network management, and network maintenance data. MSUs have a routing label which allows an originating signaling point to send information to a destination signaling point across the network. In mobile systems like GSM and UMTS, more signaling capabilities are required to support non-call related signaling functionalities like measurements, handover control, user mobility, etc. Also there are additional network elements like HLR, VLR, authentication center, etc. To support these additional functionalities, three new protocol layers are introduced in control plane, mobile application part, MAP, base station subsystem application part, BSSAP Radio Access Network Application Part, RANAP Let us now look into some of the interactions involving SS7 protocol stack and PSTN, GSM and UMTS networks. 
control plane and the PSTN networks or in PSTN GSM and UMTS interconnect, uses ISUP-based SS7 signaling. Main purpose of it is to establish circuit switch calls in between landline users and mobile users. In GSM and UMTS core network, SS7 signaling is used to transport GSM mobile application protocol messages in between various network elements for example, MSC, SGSN, GMSC, GGSN, HLR, VLR, and AUC. In GSM network, A interface between MSC and GSM access network element. BSC uses SS7 signaling transport to carry BSSAP messages. Since the mobile station, MS, and MSC have to communicate via BSC, there is a need of virtual connection between the MSC and mobile station and hence the services of SCCP are also required. The summarized figure represent the various applications of SS7 in call control, database-driven application support and radio interface-related controls. In this section, we will briefly discuss about the various SS7 layers. The message transfer part or MTP acts as the carrier for all SS7 messages, providing reliable transfer from one SP to another with error detection and correction. The communication is node-to-node. SS7 is built on the foundation of MTP, which consists of three sub-layers. The lowest level, MTP Level 1, defines physical and electrical characteristics. MTP Level 2 Data link control, helps in error-free transmission of signaling messages between adjacent elements. MTP Level 3, Network Layer, is responsible for taking message from any element in a signaling network to any other element within the same network. The ISDN user part or ISUP, Defines the protocol and procedures used to set up, manage, and release trunk circuits that carry voice and data calls over the public switched telephone network, PSTN. ISUP is used for both ISDN and non-ISDN calls. ISUP messages are sent from a switch, to the switch where the next circuit connection is required. Calls that originate and terminate at the same switch, do not use ISUP signaling. In ISUP call, circuits are identified using Circuit Identification Code, CIC. Typical ISUP call flow is IAM, Initial Address Message, to initiate call setup by calling party. ACM Address complete message, when destination node is identified and ringing applied. a &M, answer message, when called party answers the call. REL, release message, initiated from either side to release the call. RLC, release complete message, acknowledgement of call release. Signaling Connection Control Part or SCCP, provides connectionless and connection-oriented network services via MTP3, for the transfer of signaling messages between SSPs. SCCP provides more detailed addressing information than MTPs. While MTP3 provides point codes to allow messages to be addressed to specific signaling points. SCCP provides subsystem numbers, SSN, to let messages be addressed to specific applications at these signaling points. MTP transfers messages node-to-node, -node, 
Wallace CCP transfers messages end to end. SCCP is used as a transport layer for TCAP based services like free phone 800 888, local number portability, and roaming. SCCP also provides the means by which NSTP can provide global title translation. Because NSTP provides global title translation, originating SSPs do no need to know the destination point code, DPC, or subsystem number, SSN, of the associated service. Only STPs need to maintain the tables of destination point codes or SSNs associated with specific services and possible destinations. TCAP enables the deployment of advanced intelligent network services by supporting exchange of non-circuit related information between signaling points using the SCCP connection as service. An SSP uses TCAP to query NSCP to determine the routing number associated with a dialed 800, 888, or 900 number. The SCP uses TCAP to return a response containing the routing number or an error or reject component back to the SSP. TCAP provides a means for SCP to SCP communication via STPs. TCAP is not limited to database access, it is also used to invoke other features from remote switches. TCAP services include free phone, calling card, and wireless roaming. When a mobile subscriber roams into a new mobile switching center, MSC, area, the integrated visitor location register request service profile information from the subscriber's home location register, HLR, using mobile application part, MAP, information carried within TCAP messages destinations. To summarize, Signaling system number 7 or SS7 in short is a global standard for telecommunications defined by the International Telecommunication Union Telecommunication Standardization Sector or ITUT in its Q700 series. SS7 is also referred to as Common Channel Signaling or CCS due to its hard separation of signaling in bearer channels. Nodes in the SS7 signaling network are called signaling points. Three types of signaling points are defined, service switching point, SSP, signal transfer point, STP, service control point, SCP. SSPs are switches. STP is a router and or gateway and SCP provides access to databases. SS7 uses a four-level protocol stack. Lower two layers correspond to MTP1 and 2 respectively. MTP3, together with the SCCP forms layer 3. ISUP and TCAP are considered as users of MTP and SCCP. To support additional signaling functionality requirements of mobile networks, GSM and UMTS, three new protocol layers are introduced in control plane. Mobile application part, MAP. Base station subsystem application part, BSSAP. And radio access network application part, RANAP. This completes the module. Click Next Topic from Navigation Menu.